<laughs> it's a possibility that the civilization that might have done some of this might have been ended by the younger Dryas. But I actually think, given the extension of the human timeline, given the possibility that it may not have been just us, it might have been other species of hominids potentially involved. I don't know. I, I open up that window to like potentially hundreds of thousands of years. What do you mean other species of hominids? Well, Denisovan, Denisovans, Neanderthals, we have a complex genetic history. So us ourselves, our species is now out potentially 800, 900,000 years old. That's based on teeth morphology, mm -hmm. studies into teeth morphology, right. uh, studies into like when we split from a common ancestor with the Neanderthals, like our DNA train. Uh, from a fossil record, where we, we, the oldest human remains are like 300,000 years old. But, but a couple of recent studies looking at the rates of dental evolution and our DNA put the window much further, like towards a million years, but you know, eight, 900,000 years. Mm -hmm. We're also finding that our, 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 our history is more complex. We have you know, the, the discovery of the Denisovans or the Denisovans is a fairly recent thing. That gets a whole other species of hominid. Um, and there's some evidence of tool use and even sophisticated tool use. There's a jade bracelet that is a Denisovan artifact that has drill holes in it. Uh, and the one other thing that I've learned recently that I always I always thought that um, like Neanderthals couldn't talk, like that was I just thought ah oh, you know our studies and what we found of Neanderthals the, the the larynx and the structure of their throat meant that they couldn't talk. I think that's recently been reversed. I think now there's evidence that they could in in fact talk, and. We don't know anything about the Denisovans. We, we literally have a couple bones that we're working from, like a pinky bone and a couple other pieces, I think. So we don't know if they could talk. And, and you kind of need speech to organize and for civilization. Yeah. At least we do it verbally. I mean, Graham Hancock might argue that maybe some of their methods of communications might have been some other mechanism. So it just, again, in, in speculation, I, I don't rule out when you consider the concept of a lost ancient civilization... I don't, I'm not saying aliens, but I think it could certainly have involved other types of humans. We've got all the elongated skulls as well in, in South America. That's a real interesting phenomena. Um, you know, Graham would, I've heard him talk about the fact that some that some of those people that they may have had other faculties that, that created or, or, or achieved some of this stonework. I prefer- What does he say about that? Well, he, he, I mean, he gets attacked for this endlessly, but he- you know, he he says that it's possible that they achieved some of the things they did through other mental f faculties, not just telepathy, but telekinesis and stuff like that. I mean, there's stories that just seem to ro go along those lines. I, I prefer to take the technological angle, just given that we have the evidence for some of the tools and powerful tools being used and achievements being made, like these thousand plus ton statues. I mean, God, I think I was telling you at, at dinner last night that, you know, in there's a quarry in Egypt that had they disconnected that one limestone block it would have been five thousand tons you know, right there's, you know there, there's stuff up to that scale that seems like they were working on it and and uh it's crazy that at the minya quarry but so i i don't rule out the possibility for a lost ancient civilization that it could have involved other species of human of mm -hmm. hominids like we're we're one we're the last humans left right there were other humans. We're the we killed off the rest of them. <laughs> we're the mm -hmm. last humans left. Are you aware of the evidence? I'm real. I'm really fuzzy on this, but there's some sort of evidence that was found that basically says that our DNA or our the telomere on our okay. DNA, the telomeres have been like capped or something happened where there's evidence that like a, a pre-civilization could have possibly had a lifespan that was like ten times our lifespan or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there's some really interesting. Uh, there's like a very stark um, difference between our DNA and the DNA that was found in what was it compared to the DNA in what? I don't forget what it was. Probably in chimps and in chimps, yeah, and yeah, other other uh, yeah, our closest relatives. Well, so there's, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent familiar with the telomere thing. I've heard that, mm -hmm. but I've always been fascinated by the work of guys like Lloyd Pye. Lloyd Pye, that's the guy. That's how I heard about this. Yeah, so Lloyd Pye is interesting. He he he. Uh, it's a great lecture online called "Everything You Think You Know Is Wrong." Uh, he was he was this he was probably more more well known for being the keeper of the Star Child skull, which is this interesting artifact. But he was genuinely interested also the Star Child skull. Oh, that's a whole other rabbit hole. Bro. Okay, it's, all right. Keep let's keep going. Let's not get you off track. Interested. It's interesting. But he was interested in in human origins and human evolution as well. And he wrote a book called "Everything You Think You Know Is Wrong," and. Uh, I will say that 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 he does, he does 
do the whole um, Anunnaki thing. Like he he yeah. does go down the route of uh, what's his name? Um, who wrote Tenth Planet? Sitchin. Zachariah Sitchin. So this is he he sort of follows that. But I mean, I and I'm not I'm not I don't think Sitchin is correct, and I'm not really a believer in the Anunnaki stuff. But oh really? No, I, I think there's I think Sitchin was kind of pretty comprehensively kind of debunked with um his how he translated his deliberate mistranslations and it, it's a long story with Sitchin but uh not to say that you can rule like that possibility isn't ruled out I I where what the work that Lloyd Pye did made it, it interesting from a perspective of a potential intervention theory which is means that he was sort of point hinting at the fact that we might have been genetically engineered as a species, and there's some evidence that, at least from a he was in, he was looking at the evidence to support that. I think we we have I am gonna get this wrong. <laughs> we have we have a different number of chromosomes, right, than other species, than our closest relatives, right. And when you look at the at the DNA structures, it almost looks like we've been engineered, like you, that we, they've been tied together and kind of engineered that way. We, there's a few genetic oddities about our species that. Lloyd Pye was suggesting might be indications that we've been engineered. So it gets into that in detail. I'm not an expert. It's been a long time since I've read the book. Um, and this flies in the face of evolution. like It does in a lot of ways, but there are sort of other examples. I don't know if it's horses or something like that that have have a similar like chromosomal difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he he. It's not the only thing he points at. Like we're it's we're a weird kind of species with some of the diseases that we have. I mean, he 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 talks about the fact that we're like one of the only species that dies of exposure. Like you can't. We're not. It's like we're not well engineered for the planet. You right, know? right. You ever seen a dog just looks at the sun, like its eyeballs? They're just looking at the sun. They're like, <laughs> don't look at the nuclear explosion. You'll go blind. No, they're fine. We go blind if we look at the sun. We don't have very good night vision. We, we we die from exposure if we're left out, you know, in the without clothing and shelter and all those sort of things. Yeah, we, we have a bunch of really weird genetic diseases that other species don't seem to suffer from. I mean, there's even some deficiencies in our genome that we're so far away from every other wild animal. It's insane. It is well, and that and that's that's always been true. I mean, the whole missing the missing gap idea is you'd actually need like a dozen missing links or the missing link you know the idea that oh there's a missing there's a missing link in the, the chain of evolution to get to humans and like you'd, you'd need more than one mm. like it's the, to go from our nearest ancestors and neanderthals to us is, is a huge jump i mean and it's actually he points out that in a lot of cases it gets that gets obfuscated by the way they lay out skeletons like 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 by by making skeletons of neanderthals look more humanoid in terms of like you know they they space out the neck and they don't show it like it was where they had no neck and their shoulders were kind of much closer to their head there there's this huge genetic and evolution gaps between us and our nearest relatives not you know in 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 a number of different areas so he, he he gets into that and it's it's an interesting idea like i don't but i don't know i'm not i don't I don't know how to explain it one way or the other. I do I do rate the whole intervention theory as a possibility. So either mm. either the OG intervention theory, which is life itself, panspermia, like DNA itself coming to this uh, world by intervention or by just panspermia as an accident, like comets could well be the progenitors of life in the universe. Like the fact we're learning more and more about the fact that there's, you know, that the amino acids and the building blocks of life could be contained in cometary material in those icy cores or even with the if they're radioactive they could be liquid cores liquid water could be carried by these things mm -hmm. which could contain the building blocks of life and it's really interesting to think that you know this is the mystery that's at the origin of life altogether and you know we're definitely creatures of this planet too I'd say that like we, we you trace our DNA we, we're part of the tree of life of this planet but it's the one as far as evolution's gone from single cell organisms through the through the dinosaurs to to us the one part of that that's never kind of changed that's never evolved is is dna itself so the way that life gets expressed as a technology the dna that's never really changed like dna as a technology has has not changed it's just it's changed its expression like it's the forms and the the life that it creates has changed and there's a real mystery at the at the point of origin of life, like how DNA came to be. You know, this is a this is a, an ongoing field of research. There are people trying to figure this out. Can you, you know, I mean, 
I, I personally think it's quite unlikely that it was a bunch of, you know, proteins and amino acids in some warm water that got hit by lightning and boom, there's DNA. It's it's a very complex structure. Yes. And and even by saying that, oh, okay, so life might have been seeded on this planet, either like Prometheus style, where mm-hmm. the, the aliens came and said, sprinkled some DNA in the river and away we go, or or it just arrived on a planet from somewhere else. All you're really doing is kicking the can down the road. Like it still had to start somewhere. Um but it's a possibility. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if panspermia was the origin of life on this planet. Could have been another civilization. I don't know. And I think there's some interesting lines of evidence and, and interesting thinking from people about the idea that it could have been a more direct intervention into evolution uh, later on in time. I'm not saying I believe that. I just think it's interesting. And it's it's tough to rule out some of those possibilities based on the evidence. Especially when you look at some of the stuff that we're looking at here and the stuff that you've discovered. Mm-hmm.